going to consider the possible exam question. Bonhoeffer's most significant teaching is on leadership. Discuss. And the issues here are fairly clear, aren't they? First of all, what was Bonhoeffer's teaching on leadership? Secondly, is it more significant than his general teaching on discipleship? And thirdly, we need to discuss in our opening paragraph what we mean by significant. So what was Bonhoeffer's teaching on leadership? Well, he was attacking the rise of the Führer, Adolf Hitler, in Nazi Germany, and the tendency to make the leader into a messiah figure, somebody that we idol worship, and therefore follow with blind obedience. To Bonhoeffer, following teachings in the Bible, the leader has to be the servant, not the idol. Because the ultimate authority, the Bible teaches, comes from God, not from human beings. And the leader stands, says Bonhoeffer, alone before God with his or her own conscience. Leaders such as Hitler tend to set themselves up as gods in themselves. And in so doing, says Bonhoeffer, they mock God and they must inevitably perish. The leader becomes dangerous, says Bonhoeffer, when we project our idea of a messiah figure onto a human being and see the leader as a kind of saviour. Echoes here throughout the rise of Hitler. And therefore Hitler becomes a misleader in two senses of the word. What is Bonhoeffer's teaching in, on discipleship, and is that indeed more significant and fundamental? Possibly and arguably yes, because the key insight in Bonhoeffer's cost of discipleship is that we receive not cheap grace, but costly grace. Cheap grace is a sort of grace that leads to anonymous Christians, Christians that you cannot see in society because they're simply taking individual benefits from belief without any radical change in lifestyle. True Christianity, or, uh, which, which uh, embraces costly grace, has at its heart sacrifice and discipline because it cost the life of God's own son, says Bonhoeffer. And the key verse in the Bible that he would refer to is Luke chapter 9, verse 23, also in the other two synoptic gospels, Matthew and Mark. Those who would come after me, says Jesus, must leave self behind, take up their cross and follow me. And the key phrase perhaps there is take up their cross. For Bonhoeffer, it meant the founding of a new community. He argued for a new type of monasticism, like the monks of old, which lived, he says, in protest, I quote, against the secularisation of Christianity and the cheapening of grace. And the elements of this were a community of believers who lived together and followed the principles of costly service. And another story that he relates in The Cost of Discipleship is of the rich young man in Matthew 19, 16 to 22. The commandment here is to leave his home to give up all his wealth and simply to follow me Jesus says follow me he has to sell all his possessions and Bonhoeffer comments the life of discipleship is not the hero worship that we would pay to a good master but ob obedience to the son of God faith means radical obedience to the way of the cross so what is the connection Thirdly, between these two, it seems that Bonhoeffer's theology of costly grace and servanthood comes first, and his arguments about leadership follow from that. So, arguably, again, it is the servanthood in the cost of discipleship and the costly grace that is foundational to Bonhoeffer's theology. The radical call to sacrifice comes from the general call to discipleship, which then translates into how leaders should serve the community. Ultimately, it is pride, as well as his wealth, that stops the rich man following Christ. When Christ calls a man, says Bonhoeffer, he bids him come and die. So to conclude, 
Our conclusion in an essay such as this needs to engage with two things, the theology of leadership and the theology of discipleship. Arguably, it is the discipleship theology that is foundational to Bonhoeffer's life, whereas we know he sacrificed himself in a number of ways, returning from America, where he was safe, to confront Nazism with a new religious movement at Finkenwald. And through that, of course, he became implicated in the struggle to depose Hitler. Although he was not directly involved in the bomb plot, he knew about it, unarguably, and also engaged in smaller acts of rebellion, such as helping people to flee Nazi persecution into Switzerland. For that, it cost him his life just before the ending of the Second World War.